All right, yes, and we are back with Why in the Morning as promised. Special thanks to Michelle Ashira. That was quite informative right there. And special thanks to our guest as well. Remember, we have a question on Facebook, and we are urging you to answer the question because uh, that's the only way we can get to chat, interact. Uh, so we appreciate your views, comments, and suggestions. Head straight to our Facebook. We'll be sampling them towards the end. But right about now, I have uh, Mrs. Mudoni Momo, who's a serial entrepreneur. She doesn't like to be put in a box. She's here to tell us... Uh, <laughs> about design, about business, about social media, about a lot of things. So get your seatbelts on and let's get ready for the ride. Karibu mm, Asante Thank All you right. for having me. Uh, you look yeah. amazing as well. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I know I asked this off air, but uh -huh. how old is your hair? Uh, 13 plus years. 13 I don't plus. count. You don't count. <laughs> yeah. It's very beautiful. Thank you very African much. Hair right there. Your yeah. camera is number four. Yeah. Uh, you can introduce yourself. Mm. Uh, list all the credentials, everything uh, that you know. Uh, 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 we uh, might be here till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my name is Mudoni Momo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a mother of three and a wife to one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's important to say that part. Very important. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I'm a lecturer by profession. Uh -huh. I teach design. Uh -huh. And um, I run two businesses, uh -huh. Green Creative Company Limited uh -huh. and Gogag Experiential. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. These are uh, two different companies or two different uh, businesses that, uh, that do uh, absolutely different things. Yes, they do. All right. Well, there's another part uh, that you haven't told them about, but I'm going to stick it <laughs> in, <laughs> into your profile. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but let's talk. Uh, let's talk about Green Creatives first. Mm. What is what does uh, Green Creative do? What does it do? Okay, Green Creative uh -huh. is a branding house uh -huh. that deals with uh, both furniture production mm -hmm. and corporate branding. Uh -huh. So essentially, what we do is we create spaces uh -huh. for people. Mm -hmm both at home mm -hmm. and in their office. Right. So when you look at the office, for example, if a client has, say, um, say an activation, say mm -hmm. they, uh, let's look at FMCGs, like say Omo, who wants to mm -hmm. do an activation in a mall. All right, we so come and say build. Why two five four? We want more viewers <laughs> in. Uh, we want more viewers in in across the country. So we are yes. activating something. Yes, uh -huh. we are activating. Uh -huh. So when we are activating, uh -huh. we there is. The structure that people come and see, probably uh -huh. we've we've come and created your studio uh -huh. out of out of here uh -huh. to be in a mall, uh -huh. say Junction Mall. Uh -huh. So we come and create your studio there. Mimi ni fundi, naenda na jenga yo hapo. I design it uh -huh. and make sure that it's fabricated and created to how it's supposed to look. Uh -huh. I don't come and do the experiential bit, uh -huh. which is someone else will come in and talk to you with brand ambassadors, you know, those two pretty girls who come uh -huh. and say, oh, yeah, 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 this is us and all that stuff. Uh -huh. I don't do that, but uh -huh. I build. I just build. build and make sure it looks up to the client's brand. All right. Everybody, yeah. every time a lady tells me a uh, mini fundi, I build, yeah. I look at the nails and I oh, don't, you don't, <laughs> don't be fooled. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be <laughs> fooled. But anyway, so uh, and then let's get to Go Gaga now. What, yes. uh, what, what is Go Gaga about? Go Gaga is now different. It's uh -huh. uh, for conferencing and events, and it focuses on education and women. So education in the fact that we have conferences that we run mm -hmm. through the year. We have uh, Social Media Week, and we mm -hmm. also run our client uh, conferences mm -hmm. that... Um, really are for educating the people. Mm -hmm. Our focus is a lot on social media in those particular conferences. Mm -hmm. And now when it comes to, to events, we run our own events and mm -hmm. clients' events. Mm -hmm. And these events are not like your 10,000 people kind of events. Mm -hmm. We look at small niche events. Mm -hmm. We have two of our own, one being Zuri Awards mm -hmm. and the other one being Social, uh, uh, social Media Week and Digital Media Awards. Oh, yeah. these, these are really things that really are varying interest uh -huh. but really uh working towards what we're looking at yes. all right mm. uh, the goal is the same but the, yes. all these things are, are varied Zika. i'd like to know zuri awards uh, mm. what kind of people do you award at uh, zuri awards zuri awards is ma mainly for women uh -huh. who are unsung uh -huh. people who are not known uh -huh. you know we came to realize uh for example there are so many people who over and over uh -huh. even if i asked you today who is a woman who's done spectacular things in kenya what would come first in your mind? Uh, just come again. A spectacular woman who's done something g great in Kenya. Which woman do you know? All right. Every time I'm, I'm riding back 
home. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the trees and the fresh air. I always think about Wangari. Wangari, Madhaya. Yeah. But you see, the, I appreciate her also. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But there are women who are current, who are young, uh-huh. who are doing outstanding things and mm-hmm. people don't know about the initiative. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just recognizing those women mm-hmm. allows them to be able to bloom from uh-huh. where they are. Mm-hmm. So we have women from as young as, I think the youngest was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. A girl who, she's been through a lot of hardship in mm-hmm. her life. And by the time she's gotten there, she's already educated 16 girls. Mm-hmm. 16 girls at 20 years old. Really? Educated in what sense? Kuapeleka shule, kualipia school fees. At 20? Yes. Why is this? <laughs> okay. Imagine from six. If she's been doing it since she was younger. She's uh-huh. been well, uh, bringing her kids. sourcing the fans? From to... her friends, uh-huh. well-wishers, and things like that. So she, in her village, uh-huh. Ushago, she's educated these girls. How do you get to know about these amazing women doing amazing stuff for their communities? It's mostly digital uh-huh. because our capacity is such that we are able to talk through through our di- digital platforms, mm. Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. LinkedIn, Twitter. Mm-hmm. So we put out call, calls for nominations mm-hmm. and people come and uh, give in their submissions. And mm-hmm. this go through a vetting process by a judging panel. Mm-hmm. These judges look at them and see which ones are uh, have enough weight. Mm-hmm. But trust me, even by the time umeka submission yako hapo, mm-hmm. most people have gone further than most people, mm-hmm. ha- uh, everyone in the country, mm-hmm. really. So it's not that the ones who are not selected mm-hmm. did not like uh, meet criteria, uh-huh. but it's just that you can only select a few. Uh-huh. We usually do around, uh, we have 15 categories, uh-huh. we usually do around 45 stories. Uh-huh. Sometimes there are some categories that people don't put in submissions, which uh-huh. is okay, but there, uh, there are times that we have all the people talking about women, huma- humanitarian work uh-huh. that they do. So in those 15 categories, now we choose three, three women uh-huh. who now we, f- we focus on and we take their pictures, create stories uh-huh. for them, do videos. And these are the sort of things that are launch pads for them. They can uh-huh. go and use them now to say, get funding, uh-huh. to be able to talk uh-huh. about the work uh-huh. they're doing, uh-huh. go get ad- other awards. Because Some sort these are, of yeah, something that packaging, because uh-huh. Most people are which unable is, to package themselves as, yes, a, as, a <laughs> as a designer. So uh-huh. it really comes back to even my, my background, which uh-huh. is design. Because uh-huh. all these things, design resolves all those problems, uh-huh. as I was telling you before. Uh-huh. And all what we do is really anchored on that, right. creating solutions for these people. You're very passionate about this. Yeah. Uh, your students must love you so much. <laughs> The reason I say your students must love you so much. You're a you're you're you are a teacher. Yeah. Impact knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, your field is design. Mm. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this. Your background, how it started, your undergrad, mm. or maybe even high school, because uh, it goes way back. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I was in standard six, let uh-huh. me start from standard six because that's where I can remember. I told my mother that I wanted to be an artist. Uh-huh. And my mother was like, are you sure? Uh-huh. Those are not careers. Those are called hobbies. <laughs> you know, just clarification. Uh-huh. You know, when you're yes. told, get this clear. Uh-huh. Art is a, a hobby. A hobby? Careers are medicine, uh-huh. engineering, that like me. It's instilled in us even in, uh, from primary exactly. school. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So you can imagine how disappointed I was uh-huh. until I decided engineering, considering she's an engineer. Uh-huh. I was like, let me go for let engineering. Let me make mama proud. Yes. And uh-huh. then I decided, hey, let me go for the hard one. Uh-huh. Aeronautical engineer. Engineering. <laughs> it <laughs> was <laughs> a new thing like that. It sounded so <laughs> nice even to my mouth. I remember <laughs> when I was joining campus, the only nine, the intake was only nine students imagine. for aeronautical engineering. Yeah, uh, and uh, they were the most feared in school. Exactly, I, I know about aeronautical. Exactly. Mm. So I was there, I was just feeling, yes, this must be the right career considering mm-hmm. it has a nice name and I have to, I can deal with aeroplanes and I loved aeroplanes very mm-hmm. much. So it's either that or I become a pilot. Uh-huh. And pilot was not part of the deal because you were five children uh-huh. and, and uh, pesas are a pilot. Yes, as you can, uh, the uh, trading is quite hey, expensive. It's uh-huh. very expensive. So I decided, let me at least get close to the, those aeroplanes by, uh-huh. by fixing them. Uh-huh. And I like working with my hands really since uh-huh. I was little... I always used to fix something. Mm-hmm. Even today, at a mara mtu unona, dini yangu imearibika, I can fix it. Uh-huh. By the way, baton, us, baton mara kiatu, nini, uh-huh. nini, 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 I can fix You're those a fixer. things. You're I, I fix stuff. Uh-huh. So, 
by the time I got to high school, I uh, I was able to study the art. Uh -huh. Still, we still had art. There was a period that there was no art in uh -huh. in most high, uh, in 844. Uh -huh. I studied art uh -huh. and I finished. I passed very well. Uh -huh. Then after that, uh, now it, it came masaza pre before university. Then uh -huh. my parents were like, okay. Instead of going to a course, more pale. Let's see if you can perfect on your science. Uh -huh. So I moved to do something called international. <laughs> Typical African brand. We can go for next year to IB International uh -huh. Baccalaureate. Uh -huh. it, it was really a pre-university course uh -huh. that enables, uh, for for better uh, lack of better words, for uh -huh. me, uh -huh. discover yourself uh -huh. because that's where I discovered myself. Uh -huh. There was definitely art there, so I was like, yeah. And then there, there were sciences, mm -hmm. but what? My sciences. Tank. Ah, tank. <laughs> Art. Like you like this. <laughs> Art over here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then my mom is just sat down. She, I think she now was like, okay, let's just do this thing that you want mm -hmm. to do. Because mm -hmm. I think by that point in time, I'd really excelled, excelled, excelled in art until uh, she also came to realize that that's a passion that mm -hmm. I had. And definitely I went, um, I went to University of Nairobi and uh, pursued design as an uh, undergraduate course. Mm -hmm. It was good. I passed very mm -hmm. well. Because it's something you love. Yeah, actually. it's something mm -hmm. I, I loved. Mm -hmm. First class honors, mm -hmm. got um, a scholarship for doing my master's. Mm -hmm. I went and did my master's there. And after that, as a good student mm -hmm. would do, started teaching. <laughs> Yes. And that's how you give back. Yes, that's how you give back. Yeah. So, uh, studying design, uh, is it, uh, uh, it's a more, what do you call it, a more practical, it, uh, it's a practical based kind of course, yeah? Yes, and people underestimate what it means to do uh -huh. design. I'm telling you that when we were doing undergraduate, for example, mm -hmm. we used to sleep between four and five hours in a night. Architecture students, and, like architecture And students. when you have those, we used to call them pinups, uh -huh. the end of year exams, you would sleep those four hours in a week uh -huh. so that you can prepare for what you're going to put out there. Uh -huh. Because it was very, very involving. Uh, and, and intense. And intense. Uh -huh. It's not a career for faint-hearted people, for lack of better words. Uh -huh. They, even in the business, for uh -huh. example, I think about people who have gone to agencies to work in agencies. Uh -huh. The amount of hours you need to work in an agency is, oh, uh -huh. it's over the top. Uh -huh. Because most of them leave work at midnight, one o'clock. You uh -huh. have deadlines of clients. By morning, 6 uh -huh. a.m., you're already on that computer. Uh -huh. um, I've even come to realize that many people in agencies are going through even mental health issues because uh -huh. of or because of such very mm. long, very strict, very mm. tiring hours. You went hours. into the corporate mm. world before you decided to teach and, uh, yes. and run your own businesses. Yes, I did. All right. Uh, what was the experience like in the corporate world? No, in first, a few uh, first I started from NGO. Uh -huh. NGO. NGO was good, but it also had so many challenges. Mm -hmm. I managed to visit very much, uh, many parts of Kenya and mm -hmm. understood so many cultures mm -hmm. and people, and I was able to do crafts for them. Mm -hmm. But going to the corporate world, mm -hmm. whoa, that Before was... Before we go to the corporate world, uh, uh, which community in Kenya did you see as, uh, as some designs that really, uh, that you kind of fancied? From the <laughs> furniture to the, to the structures to the, to the dressing? They were so, so, so different. Uh -huh. It's so hard to say this is it. Uh -huh. Because if you go like to Trukana, you find these people in serious hardship where unambua leo hapa ni barabara kesho ni mto and they don't even have water. Then you're asking, what do you mean ni mto? Water from Uganda will come and sweep <laughs> these people away. You ask yourself, what? And these are the very people who are going to make this basket beautiful chukana mm. basket. You know mm -hmm. the ones that kitambo kila mtu alikuwa na moja kwa nyumba yake ya kweka nini laundry. laundry yeah. Those baskets. Uh -huh. You know. And then trying to make that fit into because most of what we used to do was export. To fit into the export market. Uh -huh. 
getting that balance. Uh-huh. Kuambia huyu mama wende ukatafute those reeds. And then they are going to tafuta reeds mahali kuna cattle rustlers, uh-huh. people with guns and stuff like There's that. There's so many challenges. There's so many challenges that uh-huh. they go through. But the diversity is beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You move to the coast to a place like Kiunga Kiwayu, you find mm-hmm. people they don't even know clothes. Honestly, uh-huh. it is now a totally different kind of people. Uh-huh. They are they are water comes and brings flip flops from Asia where 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 zinakuja zinaziba the 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 turtle reserve uh-huh. so these people collect those those flip flops and make craft out of them wow. you see that is so different saving you the environment even, in saving, the process saving the environment and giving themselves some livelihood uh-huh. yeah you go to kisi where people have dug huge quarries they are really messing their environment uh-huh. to to have a soapstone because that's uh-huh. really what they know uh-huh. they carve the soapstone you go to wamunyu uh, you go to uh, this kamba makweni areas mm-hmm. where they are master craftsmen carving mm-hmm. you know just it is so different you can't even pinpoint and say this is it this you even come to nairobi unapata uh-huh. watu bones they've gone and collected bones from the mm-hmm. the different uh, places where they vichinjio uh, uh-huh. apa bama ama huko juu dagoreti they get the bones they come boil them they make beads they make jewelry you know it's wow. just so the amazing the diversity is beautiful it's amazing it's so, amazing what a time to be a kenyan yeah yeah <laughs> all right that's mm. experience in mm. the ngo world mm-hmm. uh corporate let's get to the corporate world you Whoa. get into <laughs> into running company <laughs> uh-huh. corporate world was cutthroat uh-huh. for lack of better words it was just cutthroat it was you go there the competition is very very intense mm-hmm. because here you have things called targets mm-hmm. it's not that we didn't have them in NGO mm-hmm. but here everyone is fighting for that kapai mm-hmm. yeah so you're there people are telling you oh no these are my clients mm-hmm. you cannot touch my client you have to do this you have to do that and the competition is stiff there are 10 other branding companies that are also fighting for this one client mm-hmm. that you you you're dealing with over uh-huh. here so cutthroat is uh, is the word for corporate world it is uh, business now business uh-huh. business has been up and down uh-huh. for me business started off with friendship uh-huh. that became sour mm-hmm. into bad business mm-hmm. by the time i was done with the first my first attempt of business mm-hmm. it was very very disheartening uh-huh. because i lost friendship i lost relationships uh-huh. in it uh, i lost because of something called partnership these are lessons you carry with yeah, you yeah carried the that i carried them uh-huh. but i also gained things uh-huh. i gained a lot of experience i uh-huh. was able to i was able to to make decisions for uh-huh. my family mm-hmm. you know things that are, i am reaping right now mm-hmm. because had i continued in that state mm-hmm. i would not have been where i am today mm-hmm. so business was tough mm-hmm. then it was it was starting off after four years of doing something you know mm-hmm. and you start off from scratch again with nothing mm-hmm. so that that was my biggest lesson first of business mm-hmm. but you know you live with your mind and your currency is right here in your mind mm-hmm. yeah that's a pro- if you, if you go into business and you don't understand what you're doing mm-hmm. you are unable to replicate it if things went south uh-huh. yeah so with that i was able to replicate what i had been doing mm-hmm. so i started off my business of creating furniture for children mm-hmm. and also still doing my corporate the corporate thing that i understood from uh-huh. where i was working from the corporate world uh-huh. and since those have grown uh-huh. and while that was happening i went and put myself in another partnership mm-hmm. <laughs> but this partnership was with someone i know the one who akinikosea kuna madhe akona kiboko tutaenda to beat yane huko then it's a leona you know okay, okay. Uh-huh. that one was you can never sister. go wrong with you, sister uh, she's my sister as long as mom is alive <laughs> yeah as long as mom is there akuna vile tuta nini na tuko na the same the same we've been brought up in the same way uh-huh. we sort of have, have the same values and All it's right. easier i'm told uh, uh, SMEs or businesses uh, owned and run by women in kenya mm-hmm. uh, are, are, are doing better mm-hmm. uh, as per a survey mm-hmm. uh, that was released on monday mm-hmm. on uh, on women's day and oh. this uh, survey says that uh, mm-hmm. this is cause uh, they are more customer based mm. uh, women tend to focus more on the customer do you think the customer is the most important person in the business as we line up to answer to sample some of these things yes mm-hmm. the customer is very important but not the end 
mm. the everything you mm. understand because why they're important is their feedback helps you improve mm. on what you're doing their referral gives you business mm -hmm. satisfying them mm -hmm. ensures that you have repeated business mm -hmm. from them so why i'm also saying they're not everything is because you also have to have your own values mm -hmm. within your organization mm -hmm. so at the same time you don't go doing bad things because customer may say my customer is customer mm -hmm. but you can only provide what you can uh -huh. and it's also okay to sometimes say no we can't uh -huh. Because that's something else that businesses find very hard to do. Ni mechomeka sana kwa kuto kujua kutumia iyo jina no. Yeah, and sometimes businesses fire customers uh -huh. because they are not healthy for your business. Uh -huh. Like toxic. for example, yeah, they're toxic. <laughs> because sometimes you're there with somebody and I kulip after one year. Unajua, mm -hmm. saizo you're suffering, you're uh -huh. severely suffering and mm -hmm. you're bleeding everywhere. Na labda mm -hmm. kulipa, labda you're not sure, you cannot plan, mm -hmm. you know. It is also important to know when to say no. To the you customer. Know, yes. As much as the customer is important, yes, your yes. values are also very important. Yeah, yeah. And your your profit is also very important. Uh, it's important to survival. survive. Yes. <laughs> All right. yes. So I don't know if you ever imagined yourself being a TV presenter, but you're going to help me with my job today. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, our question is, do you think art pays? I know you know. Yeah. I know you know. Let's see what they had to say okay. as our viewers. Uh, huh. So, Nicolas, Sebastian, and Samaya, uh, uh -huh. nisaidia kusoma hapo? Yeah, first. art in Alipa Kabisa. Uh -huh. Wanansi anasoma vipi? Watch, watching from Thika. Yes, some people uh, never they <laughs> follow don't. instructions, all right? <laughs> but thank you very much, Wanansi, <laughs> for telling us where you're watching us from. Mm. Uh, Angel Babe, anasoma vipi? Yes, I know a guy mwenye analisha fam yake na art. Well, wonderful, Msani mm. Jojo, anasoma vipi? Yes, it it do pay. Uh -huh. okay. All right, I'm El sure Sino if you take uh, it as a business, it will absolutely pay. But if you just do it for fun, it's not going to pay. Do you concur with uh, El Sino? But you first have to have fun in it. You understand? Yes, very much. Because I see your mwisho. Perspective. Uh, I really like uh, the perspective. I really like the perspective wish. on things. So what? I like that. Uh, the part for fun. It's All important. Right. Uh, okay. Wan well, Nancy, I'm going to tell you good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Matongo, what do you It depends on how you agree. But to me, I think it pays. All right. Mm. Uh, you think. Mm. Uh, any answer is correct yeah. when it comes to, <laughs> to uh, the question on our Facebook page. Uh, Nicolas Sebastian. Angalia mtu ametuwekea mziki. All right. All uh, the way from the US. <laughs> uh, Jiro Kaimusi watching for me. Please play uh, for me the song. Uh, or request ni Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, uh, Dominic Nganga Wagikoro anasema well represented as usual. Kabati uh -huh. Keno uh, best show. Uh, Migo Strapa anasema mm. yeah art pays a lot in Kenya. Uh, Hashtag uh, white five four. Yeah. Uh, Balozi Ken artist anasema baby. I know this is going to speak to you. I there. leave art alone. It pays Dominic Nganga Igikoro, good. Watching as usual. All right, Eliza Steve and Asaba from Nyandarwa here. Kenyans are not are yet to discover its importance. Yeah. I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah. We don't have so much time. Yeah. Kenyans are yet to discover its importance. Do you concur with that? Yes, I do because this is our culture and. Uh, for me, I feel like Africans sometimes are artistic in nature. We are very artistic. Uh -huh. uh, Kwanza, one thing that really uh, makes me feel bad is when uh -huh. I, I see in a, in a, in a take a white person to come and appreciate our culture. I love for our itengeneze, iwe kiti. Then as guys are all like, whoa. Da kube tulikuwa na iyo, yote hapo. The Maasai you know. fabric, our uh -huh. local uh -huh. wood uh -huh. right here, uh -huh. our fiber. Uh -huh. And then until next time, guys. Oh, we have come to the end of this. Tell them uh, your social Thanks. media handles as we wrap this up. Uh, there are many. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the most important I have ones. My tree house Kenya. That's uh -huh. on Facebook and Instagram, and I have at Gogaga Exp uh -huh. on both Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, YouTube, all of that. Thank all right. you. It was really nice to meet you. It was, it a was pleasure. Uh, quite an insightful conversation. Thank we you. appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. We have come to the end of Entrepreneurship Tuesday. And this time we had a flavor of different things, a, mm. a taste of every flavor mm. uh, from uh, the arts uh, to the design sector. And then we had the financial guy right here. So you always know it's a beautiful time. You always know it's a learning experience on Entrepreneurship Tuesday on Why in the Morning. Until next time, tomorrow we have Queen's Wednesday. We are celebrating the queens you don't want to miss it